Good afternoon, alien enthusiasts, and welcome to another Angry Alien Bulletin back to 3i Atlas. This thing just won't get out of the news, and for very good reasons. The more we watch this thing, the more stunts it pulls off, the more bizarre it becomes. And I urge you to just disregard everything you continue to hear about how this comet's just a little weird. It's a little bit of a weird comet, but nothing that bizarre, nothing that out of the ordinary to worry about. It's it's just an interstellar comet with a few different characteristics. Other than that, just a regular comet, nothing to see here. Please talk about something else, you UFO knobbers. I think I'm going to start using that term for myself. I call myself a UFO knobber. Wear that title with pride. But in any event, all of that having been said, I decided to do some number crunching. The more that we've learned about 3i Atlas's recent non-gravitational acceleration stunt that it pulled off when it was at perihelion with the sun, the more we learn about it, the more impossible it seems. Given the size of this object and given the fact that it hadn't adjusted its course at all over a substantial period of time. I mean, we're talking about hundreds of observations over a period of months, and this object showed no sign of any non-gravitational acceleration in spite of the fact that it had a lot of visible outgassing. It went from virtually nothing to taking off. Now, granted, not taking off in the way that we would understand it. We're only talking, you know, about 150 kilometers or so in the course of, of one day. It's it's not <laughs> moving very quickly, I would say, about at the speed of well, faster than a hike, that's for sure. Maybe a moderate bike ride, something like that, over the course of a day. Well, strenuous bike ride, actually, if we're talking about that much distance. But still, we're talking about solar system distances. It's almost imperceptible. But it was still there. And so I decided to see, given the mass of this object, given what we know about it or what we suspect about it with its lack of non-gravitational acceleration up to the point that it actually started doing it, how much force would be required in order to make an object as big as 3i Atlas shift that much? Let me tell you something. It blew my mind. <laughs> So once again, to re-emphasize, we're not talking about a lot of acceleration here. We're actually talking about a small fraction of one millimeter per second squared, just absolutely tiny, but sustained. And as long as that acceleration remains sustained for an entire day or perhaps days, weeks, months, whatever, you can look at an object drifting thousands of kilometers off of its course, which is what happens happened with the Muamua. As a matter of fact, the Muamua's acceleration, as you're going to see, was considerably less than what 3i Atlas's acceleration was. And yet, at the end of our observational period of watching it, by the time it flew outside the reach of even our best telescopes in 2017, Muamua had shifted over 60,000 kilometers out of position from where it should have been. And given Given the fact that even a small object, a small asteroid, displaces an enormous amount of mass, well, yeah, it's still going to take a lot of outgassing to make something like that happen. And of course, what was significant with the Muamua was the fact that there was no visible outgassing whatsoever. We saw no evidence of outgassing and yet an enormous amount of non-gravitational acceleration. In the case of 3i Atlas, well, we do see see outgassing or what appears to be outgassing anyway, but we're also seeing more non-gravitational acceleration than even a Muamua had. And the amount of outgassing or just sheer raw force necessary to push a multi-billion ton rock out of position even a little bit is mind-boggling. 
Okay, if you will indulge me, I'm going to go ahead and immerse us into some Newtonian physics here. First of all, the known values, or at least the values as we think we know them. First of all, the acceleration is 0 0.02 millimeters per second squared, or 2 times 10 to the negative fifth power meters per second squared. That is an insanely small amount of acceleration. But the mass based on previous observations of 3i atlas and the complete lack of non-gravitational acceleration due to its mass remains at 3.3 times 10 to the 13th power kilograms, 33 billion metric tons. Once again, this is a conservative estimate based on the complete lack of non-gravitational acceleration that we saw for months before all of a sudden this thing started to move. So if we take 2 times 10 to the negative fifth power meters per second squared and multiply that by 3.3 times 10 to the 13th power kilograms, we can come up with the necessary force. 3.3 times 10 to the 13th power times 2 times 10 to the negative fifth power results in 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 8th power newtons. That's 660 million newtons or 660 mega newtons. That's an insane amount of force. And by the way, if we want to scale this proportionally, 594 mega newtons were used for its radial acceleration and 264 mega newtons was applied to transverse acceleration. Yes, that adds up to more than 660. You're not actually adding these things up though. That's just the necessary thrust for each component of the equation. So that being the case, what does 660 mega newtons actually mean? Well, it's mind-boggling. Starship, the most powerful rocket ever designed by human beings, has a total thrust of 73.5 mega newtons delivered by 33 Raptor engines. 73.5 as opposed to 660, meaning that we're looking at about nine starships worth of thrust being applied to this thing for the entire day in order to adjust its trajectory that much. That's how heavy this object appears to be based on its size and based on its complete lack of non-gravitational acceleration up to this point. And again, this is the kind of thrust that we get out of advanced technological rocket engines, not out of cometary outgassing, which is far, far less powerful than rocket engines. So yeah, you're looking at enormous engines, assuming that they're chemical. Now, if they weren't, if they were nuclear engines, plasma engines of some kind, that definitely scales things down. You can get about 10 times the performance out of an advanced plasma plasma engine that you can get out of chemical engines like Raptor. Therefore, if this object were utilizing some sort of advanced propulsion system, a single starship's worth of propulsion, 33 of these plasma engines, for example, might be able to handle the job. Now, once again, to emphasize just how significant this non-gravitational acceleration was, Oumuamua, which had very significant NGA compared to ordinary comets, accelerated at about 4.92 times 10 to the negative sixth meters per second squared, or approximately four times less NGA than 3i Atlas displayed at perihelion. And once again, that's less NGA for an object that was much, much lighter. Now, of course, what is extremely significant about Oumuamua is the fact that this NGA came about in spite of there being no obvious outgassing of any kind, no dust, no debris, no gases, no nothing. 
no evidence of any kind of natural process that would have created this sort of acceleration. And even if there were some kind of bizarre invisible gas like just pure hydrogen, something along those lines, and we can't even figure out any sort of workable model to where that would actually function properly, like for example, a pure hydrogen iceberg, something along those lines, that's been hypothesized, or a pure nitrogen iceberg, well, that sort of thing would have disintegrated once it came into close proximity to the sun, and a muamua passed much closer to the sun than the orbit of Mercury. Anything with that low of a boiling point, both nitrogen and hydrogen, should have just disintegrated or evaporated when it was in close proximity to the sun. But it didn't. And yet, some sort of invisible force propelled it to a degree that virtually no comet had ever displayed in the past, except for comets that were making really close approaches to the sun and displayed incredible non-gravitational acceleration in the process, along with a lot of cometary outgassing, very visible outgassing that would explain the acceleration. A Muamua did it invisibly. Now, 3i Atlas isn't doing it invisibly. There's definitely signs of outgassing of some kind, but once again, we're talking about enough outgassing that can move something this heavy to a degree that dwarfs Oumuamua's acceleration and dwarfs the acceleration of every other natural comet that we've observed in the past. And for this to happen, according to Avi Loeb, and I believe him, I think his estimates are solid as far as all of this is concerned, one-sixth of the object's mass would have to sublimate very quickly and have to be involved in an explosive outgassing process in order for this propulsion to be taking place. Because as I mentioned before, natural outgassing just doesn't produce the kind of efficient thrust that rocket engines do, and certainly nothing along the lines of plasma engines. You need a lot more mass in order to produce the same thrust. So if one-sixth of this object's mass really did outgas in such a short amount of time, what will the consequences be? Well, first of all, let's talk about what rocket engines would require in order to generate this kind of deflection. It's not just the thrust, it's the fuel that would be required for an entire day's worth of deviation. The rocket engines we've talked about, the nine starships combined or eight starships, whatever I said, would guzzle about 10 to the ninth power kilograms per hour, a billion kilograms worth of fuel per hour, which is completely ridiculous. And even ion power would consume the equivalent of two aircraft carriers worth of fuel per hour. We would definitely need some kind of fusion or fission reaction in order to produce that kind of deviation with a reasonable amount of fuel. And so that gives us an impression of just how much mass is going to be necessary for the far less powerful outgassing scenario. So all that being said, there's one other thing to consider here on top of all the other anomalies that we've discussed on this channel, and that is the matter of light. For one thing, 3i Atlas turned blue as it, for some reason, experienced some sort of change in brightness, an extreme shift in its brightness in a short amount of time. Again, we've never seen this happen with a natural comet before, and the blue color suggests that it was hotter than the sun. We would have expected instead to see a red color come about as a result of this brightening because cometary gas, even cometary gas in the process of outgassing, shouldn't be as hot as the coronasphere of the sun. And yet, it was bluer than the sun, indicating that it was hotter than the sun. That doesn't sound like cometary outgassing. 
That sounds like an engine in operation. And speaking of light, the polarization of 3i Atlas's light is also very bizarre. A polarization curve tells us a little bit about the shape of the object that's generating the light or reflecting the light. And given how narrow this curve is, this doesn't resemble any comet we've ever seen before. It instead resembles asteroids or these centaur objects in the outer solar system, objects that have a different sort of shape, a more uniform reflectivity than comets do. Again, this doesn't look like a comet. It doesn't behave like a comet. It has an anti-tail unlike a comet. There are so many things about 3i Atlas, not least of which is the excessive amount of sudden non-gravitational acceleration. Months and months of nothing, and then a sudden outburst of non-gravitational acceleration that dwarfs the performance of every other comet that we've seen before. This is a bizarre object. It isn't just a comet that's a little weird. It's a really weird object, and I don't think it's fair to call it a comet. Not yet. Not until we know a lot more. So once again, to re-emphasize, is it possible? Could it have been that 3i Atlas shifted out of position because of natural outgassing? Yes, it is, but still it would have required an enormous amount of mass to be shed all at once. We're talking probably about one-sixth of the mass of the object, and for an object that weighs billions of tons, that should create an enormous cloud of debris around the object. I mean, utterly colossal and something that should be very easy to see. Not only that, when an object sheds that much of its mass out of its nucleus in such a short amount of time, if we're talking about a comet, it usually shatters. A comet just can't handle that much outgassing all at once. And yet, from what we can see thus far, 3i Atlas hasn't shattered yet. If it does at some point in the near future, if it breaks apart, that should be pretty obvious and it will strengthen the natural hypothesis, the natural explanation for this thing's behavior. But if it doesn't shatter, and if we don't see a massive cloud of dust, gas, debris, etc., I mean, it's going to be immense and easily detectable on any telescope. Even backyard telescopes will be able to see this. If we don't observe any of that going on, then we really need to start looking at other possibilities. Other possibilities, including artificial explanations. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. And this week, I'm bringing back the merch store if it isn't back already. We're going to make that 3i Atlas merchandise come back for you folks for at least a week or so because I've been getting a lot of demand for that. So keep your eyes open, all the details in the description. And until next time, stay angry about space.